I'd like to call tonight's meeting of the uh, Board of School Directors of the Upper Dublin School District to order. It is 7 p.m. and we are meeting via Zoom web conference due to the mandated pandemic closures of schools. Um, I'd like to begin this evening with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if we could, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thanks very much. And um, board members, if you could be prepared to unmute yourselves when necessary, Ms. Evans, if you could do our roll call, please. Uh, Dr. Davis. Present. Mr. Henderson. Present. Ms. Ioniti. Present. Dr. Levinowitz. Present. Mr. Ropsky. Present. Ms. Sherbier. Present. Mr. Sirota. Present. Mr. Wallach. Present. Ms. Francic. Present. All present, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Evans. All right, well, we've gotten some of the formalities out of the way, so I'd just like to make a few brief remarks. My name is Amy Francic, for those joining us remotely. Um, I'm serving this year as board president. Um, I'd like to just take a couple of seconds to make some acknowledgements. Tonight, we greet you once again from our homes as we continue to work on behalf of Upper Dublin students, staff, and larger community. A few weeks ago, I focused my opening remarks at a meeting on thanking the many first responders and essential staff who have kept this community running during this crisis. My thoughts tonight have to do with the unfolding challenges that each of us are dealing with in our homes. For my children, husband and I, we have found that each day brings a wave of new emotions. Some days we are upbeat and the sunny skies uh, over the last few days seem to help. But other days we feel depressed or lacking in motivation. Other days we see the headlines and feel anxious, while other days there is joy in seeing a friend or family member in FaceTime or Zoom. Regardless of what your days look like, know that we are with you and support you. I know our guidance counselors stand ready to address students' emotional needs. And I also know that our teaching staff has been hugely helpful in accommodating students' various learning needs and emotional needs as well. I'm very excited about this week's introduction of Google Meets into our distance learning program. And while it will be a new experience for some, I believe it will help both staff and students to feel more connected and to improve spirits. As you sit in your home offices or like me at the dining table office, um, know that we are so grateful for all of the time and support each parent and caregiver has provided in the last few weeks. We are here to help, to listen, and to share this experience in the hopes of making continual improvements for our students. We are in this together and could not do it without you. Thank you. And moving on then to what would typically be the Student Government Association report. Uh, Mr. Kaplan could not be with us this evening. He is excused. So to Dr. Yanni and his superintendent's report. Thank you, Mrs. Francis. Um, first, we would like to thank our staff as well as our students and their families for their continued collaboration as we employ our continuity of education plan. I can speak for all members of our staff when I say that we truly miss seeing our kids on a daily basis. We hope that everyone is staying uh, healthy and safe and we look forward to a return to normal operations when we're able to do so. Last week, Governor Wolf articulated a phased plan for a return to normal operations in Pennsylvania. The first regions of the state to be considered for reopening are the North Central and Northwest regions of Pennsylvania. And for folks who may not have seen the governor's press conference last week, he indicated that Southeastern Pennsylvania, where we're located, will most likely be one of the last um, sections or areas of the state to be reopened. We realized that uh, the time away from school has made instruction look and feel different than it would be if we had our kids in our classrooms throughout the district. 
as we've said before, our teachers and our kids are working through um, instruction and work that focuses on essential skills and standards. These essential skills and standards will also be reinforced in the fall when we return to school. All of the communications we have released as a district regarding COVID-19 and the related school closures are housed on, our, on the main page of our website. We remain committed to keeping our community apprised of news and information as it becomes available. On tonight's agenda, the board is going to take action to approve a number of retirements. This year, our retirees are Audrey Carminati, second grade teacher at Maple Glen Elementary School, Samuel Esposito, speech pathologist at Maple Glen and Sandy Run, Deborah Kim, high school teacher, English, Sue Lohofer, facilities and community affairs manager, Francis Schwabenland, Sandy Run Middle School reading specialist, Anne Marie Stockbauer, Fort Washington kindergarten teacher, and Karen Watkins, Fort Washington Reading Specialist. Also on our agenda this evening, there is an MOU that the board will consider approval for, and it articulates a retirement incentive between the board and the Upper Dublin Education Association. Each year, the Upper Dublin Medals Program recognizes outstanding Upper Dublin community members, including two seniors, a citizen, an educator, and a local business or nonprofit organization. We look forward to celebrating our extraordinary honorees at a date to be determined. This year, the awards go to um, Ron Feldman for Citizen, Meg Place, Principal of Jarrettown for Educator. The nonprofit uh, winner this year is Interfaith Housing Alliance. And the two students honoring, being honored this year are Annie Chang and Amy Gong. Our schools may be closed, but kindergarten and new student registration is open. We look forward to welcoming our newest Cardinals to the NAST in September. All registration information is available on our website and will also be in my superintendent's report published online. Tonight, we also congratulate Dr. Kim Miner. Dr. Miner was recently appointed as the superintendent of the Exeter Township School District in Berks County, where she will begin her tenure there on July 1st, 2020. We thank Dr. Miner for all of her contributions to the Upper Dublin School District, and we wish her well as she moves on to Exeter. Several weeks ago, the district um, mourned the loss of two um, well-known folks. First, uh, former superintendent, Dr. Bud Brown passed away. Um, the district is working in conjunction with a number of folks in, um, in collaboration to have some sort of um, celebration and, and commemoration of Dr. Brown's service to the district. Also, Mr. Doug Wisher, a longtime custodial supervisor at Jarrettown Elementary School, passed away earlier this month following a prolonged illness. Known for his kindness compa and compassion, Doug took much pride in everything Jarrettown. He was universally adored and respected by the Jarrettown community, and we extend our condolences to Doug's family and also to Dr. Brown's family during this time. That concludes my report, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Yanni. Um, next, we would typically have presentations. Um, Dr. Yanni, I believe there are no presentations this evening. There are no presentations this evening. Thank you. Um, that will take us now to our first uh, opportunity for community input. For those who are participating on Zoom, if you would kindly raise your hand to be recognized, and then uh, we will work to recognize you and provide you with four minutes to provide your comments and questions. And I would ask that you utilize the same uh, method that we do when we have live meetings to announce your name and where you reside in the district. Your full name is helpful. All right, um, Ms. Evans, uh, I see one hand raised. And it Mr. is a Sirota also has his hand raised. Yes, Mr. Sirota. I, I just wanted to remind because we have a, a lot of attendees tonight um, that the first community input is for agenda items only. Thank you. All right, we have two attendees with hands raised. Um, Ms. Evans, would you kindly allow um, 
wait, I can't, I actually am only seeing one now. And it is uh, Deanna Williams, would you allow her to speak? Ms. Williams. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm part of the correct agenda though. I'm here to speak regarding the senior graduation. Okay. So I don't know if you want me to speak now or um, speak later. Um, the, the agenda does not actually cover the graduation. If mm -hmm. you're going to speak later, I think that would help us move the earlier portion of the meeting along, unless yes, uh, Mr. Bonio disagrees. Okay. Thank you very much for your flexibility, Ms. Williams. We will return to you after our business is completed. All right, Ms. Uh, Evans, I do not see any other hands raised. So seeing no other hands, um, we will close that uh, section of community input. And moving on, Mr. Leckman, do you have any uh, announcements or communication this evening? The only announcement that I would like to make is that per a notice posted on the website, anyone who's not able to um, log into Zoom and make public comments for agenda or non-agenda items can do so by either emailing me um, or leaving a voicemail at the, uh, the phone number that is on our website. Um, so you can do that in the future. It's allowed up till 4 p.m. And I just want to note that for this evening's meetings, we did not receive any comments. Thank you, Mr. Leckman. Um, the next item is also for you, Mr. Leckman. Are there uh, minutes this evening? Yes, included for the board's action tonight are minutes from the February 24th legislative meeting, the April 1st special legislative meeting, and both the February and March committee meetings. All right, do I have a motion? Yeah, moved. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes as described, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Nay. All right, the minutes are approved. Thank you, everyone. Moving on now to our first uh, committee set of committee recommendations, Ms. Sherpier. Yeah, good evening. Um, we have uh, four items. I. Um, Item A is uh, uh, just informational. Then we have item B and C under number eight, and then also A and B under education uh, committee and pupil services. And I would like to move all four of them to the, to the board. We have a second. Second. Oh, thank you, Dr. Levinowitz, got you first. Um, all in favor of the items under Education Committee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. The items are approved. Moving on now to Mr. Sirota, the Finance Committee recommendations. Thank you. We have, uh, we have eight items for finance tonight. All eight were discussed at the Finance Committee meeting last week. Uh, so I'd like to move approval for all eight. Thank you, we have a, do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Rapsky. All in favor of the moving, uh, approving rather the items under finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. All of the items for finance are approved this evening. Moving on to personnel, Dr. Levinowitz. Good evening, there's three items, uh, three categories in personnel tonight. The personnel report, uh, contract renewal correction, uh, which is a minor correction, and also the MOU with uh, UDEA. I'd like to uh, make a recommendation, a motion that we move all three. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Davis. All in favor of approving the items under personnel report, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Thank I you. do. I do like to make a, a brief comment uh, uh, regarding uh, a man that I, that I knew very well, uh, which Doug, Doug Wisher. Uh, yeah, yeah. My son went to. My son is 33, and when I told him that Doug passed away, uh, he took it very, very hard. Uh, Doug was a true, true, true good person, and uh, it was very sad when he heard that that he did pass away. And I just want to offer my condolences to his family, and also I've known Bud Brown uh, for many, many years. 
and that too is a very sad, uh, sad death for, for our Upper Dublin. He served in the district for 30, 35 years as a superintendent, and I'd like to offer him my, my personal and district uh, condolences to, uh, to his wife and family. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Levinowitz. We certainly do echo those sentiments. I know it is, uh, was a very big loss, especially at the Jartown community that we are part of. Um, and I did not have the luxury of knowing Dr. Brown, but um, clearly his um, fingerprints are all over the work that we continue yeah. to do. I would like to add, he lived in uh, Ward 7 and while I was commissioner, I used to always uh, chat with him, go over things with the, the township and the school district. So I. Again, he lived in my district, so I knew exactly where he lived, and he was a really good person. Thanks, everybody. All right, moving on to uh, the policy no, committee. Did we have a vote? I'm sorry to interrupt. I apologize. I think I meant, and actually you brought me to a good point, and Mr. Diazio, my apologies. Um, I had forgotten earlier to ask for comments on some of the votes without being in the room. I was kind of just flying through the agenda, so I do apologize. Anytime I goof anyone on the board, please feel free to stop me if you have comments and questions that I failed to address. Um, in the meantime, let's do it right for personnel. Um, do we have, I believe we had a second from Dr. Davis on personnel. Um, all in favor of approving the items under personnel, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, those items are approved. All righty, to our policy committee, Mr. Wallach. Thank you. Um, we have the usual four items tonight, a second reading approval, second reading repeal, first reading approval, and a first reading repeal. Um, a number of these policies, especially the second readings, um, were scheduled in March, and because we didn't meet in March, they essentially got pushed through till April. Um, the first readings the same way, and then there were some additional first readings, um, all of which, both second reading and first reading, were discussed at one, if not two, policy committee meetings. Um, so I will make a motion to um, approve all four of the items, second reading and first reading and repeals. Second. Do we have a second? Yeah, second. Thank you, Mr. Sroda. Do we have comments or questions regarding those items? All right, seeing none, let us uh, take our vote. Uh, all in favor of the items under policy committee recommendations, please say aye. 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 Uh, Anyone opposed, please say nay. The items are approved. Um, we have one item of other business this evening. Dr. Levinowitz, could you take that for us? Yes, so I'd like to nominate uh, Dr. Darlene Davis for, my, for the position of Montgomery County Intermediate Unit uh, Board of Directors, term beginning July 1, 2020. Thank you, do Second. I have a second? Second. second. Thank you, Mr. Sirota. Got you first. Um, Dr. Levinowitz, uh, could you speak briefly to the role of our board as a representative, having a representative board member at the MCIU board, please? Well, yeah, the, the IU meets on a monthly basis. Each of the uh, districts that are represented by the IU send one board member uh, to those meetings, and uh, it's run similarly to our legislative meeting. Very good. Dr. Thank Davis, you. I don't know if she has anything else to add to that. I believe she's been attending. Yes. And she, uh, do you have any additional comments now or do you like to save them for the liaison reports? That. Okay, very good. Um, any other comments or questions about this item? I'd just like to thank Dr. Davis for her service in this, uh, in this role. And if we could take a vote, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Please say nay. All right. We are approved. Or actually, Dr. Davis, you are approved. Thank you very much. Um, now I'd like to move into the section of the agenda called uh, Liaison Committee Reports. Um, we had promised to be uh, bringing written reports uh, prior to the legislative meeting so that folks could have something in their agenda. And only two of us recalled that. Um, given all of the strange things that have been happening over the last month and we lost sight of it. So I do apologize for that. We're going to be posting the written reports from our comments here this evening um, following this meeting and we will get back to written reports with Ms. Evans' help 
um, at, at our next legislative meeting. So if I could begin with um, perfect timing, uh, the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit, Dr. Davis. Thank you. Um, and it has been my pleasure to serve since coming onto the board. Um, we met recently uh, last Wednesday, April 23rd, and there were just a few things that I think would be of interest to everyone. Um, I think everyone is aware that we are hiring a new executive director for the IU, and um, even in the midst of you know, not being able to have face-to-face -face meetings, we've been continuing to move forward um, with that process, and hopefully, um, we will be able to um, have someone in position before the end of this academic year. Um, the IU, like all of us, are um, doing a lot to move into a more virtual um, environment with all the trainings that they do for not only school districts, but for municipalities and um, other IUs in the area. So they've been doing a lot to um, prepare for that. They've already done some trainings and they have um, received very positive feedback from moving to that virtual environment. Um, also, the um, IU has been doing a lot of um, renovations on their old building that they used to reside in. Um, and that really um, has to do with a lot of the additional programs that have been requested throughout our county. The needs continue to grow and they have been trying to respond to all of that. And so they continue to make renovations in the old building to meet those needs. And then finally, um, their budget was approved at our last uh, meeting last week. Um, and it was unanimous by all 22 um, constituents that um, there are budget has been approved for the 2021 school year. Our next meeting will be held on May 20th at 645. And that concludes my report. Thank you so much, Dr. Davis. Um, next up, the Montgomery County Legislative Committee, um, which I represent. Um, this has been a very active committee. Typically, we meet once a month. Um, we have been meeting almost every week since the school closures. Um, in an effort to understand and advocate for public education relative to any legislation that is being uh, proposed or passed in Harrisburg. And it has um, been a, almost a moving target on a day-to-day -day or at least week-to-week -week basis. Um, so one of the primary areas that we're trying to do, uh, what we're trying to do is um, interface with our local legislators to help them understand the stark realities for public education moving forward in terms of budgets um, and in terms of the sort of side effects of the pandemic closures that they're going to be having. Um, there's some sort of misconception by some legislators in Harrisburg that we are, quote, saving money right now. Um, and there are all kinds of additional costs that we have incurred. Um, we are continuing to pay our staff. So that's a misnomer. Um, and we're just working to educate legislators to understand how their decisions will impact our operations going forward. Um, and our next meeting will likely be next week via Zoom conference. Um, up next, oh, that concludes my report. And up next is uh, Dr. Levinowitz for Eastern. Eastern Center for Arts and Technology held its first Zoom legislative meeting on April 15th. Uh, some of the highlights of that meeting uh, include the uh, beginning of our budget development calendar for 21-22. Uh, as probably some of you know, Eastern plans well in advance for its budget because it then has to get to the local boards for approval. Also, uh, for the past, uh, for many years, Eastern had our mark providing the uh, maintenance and custodial work at, at Eastern as a third party. We have uh, decided to go in another direction. We released an RFP uh, months ago. We have to date approved Interstate as doing our custodial work. Uh, we do have a position for facility manager and uh, ma maintenance person that closed on Friday. We're starting those interviews uh, this week. Uh, we're looking forward to the, how that will turn out. I just wanted to point out too that uh, Eastern made a number of donations to the relief efforts. 
on, on March 23rd, Easton was pleased to donate to Montgomery County's COVID-19 Response Center's efforts. Donations included 140 N95 masks, uh, gloves, sterile and exam gloves from our vet science program, allied health and adult practical nursing programs, and surgical masks. masks. Also, the next day, we uh, made an, an additional donation of 120 N95 masks that were used in our protective services program. Those donations were made to Upper Moreland Police, and then the remaining items went to uh, Abington. Uh, one last item is the, uh, as, as we do in Upper Dublin, uh, Eastern has developed a continu continuity of education plan that we share with, with, with all the parents of the uh, students that attend Eastern. Uh, continues to be updated and revised, much like our plan. And uh, we are doing the best that we can at this point at Eastern. As you know, it's a difficult, more difficult program because there's so much uh, uh, using your hands uh, type of activities that occur at, at Eastern, but we're doing the best uh, under the situation. And I just wanted to congratulate, commend the uh, administration at Eastern for the work that they've been doing over the past few months to continue to deliver an excellent program. Thank you, Dr. Levinowitz, appreciate it. Um, Ms. Iannitti, uh, Equity and Empowerment. Okay, hi, thanks. Um, members of Upper Dublin's Asian American Student and Family Group have teamed up with Upper Dublin's High School Club, Advo the Advocacy Club, and they have supported a local COVID-19 task force. This task force, which was organized by the Upper Dublin Chinese Association, has helped by donating masks to essential workers, organizing tutoring and mentoring sessions for Upper Dublin students and has also created an educational database for students and educators. More information about this important work can be found at www.udchinese.org. That's it. Thank you so much. Um, the Educational Advisory Committee, Ms. Trippier. The EAC did not meet in April, and the next meeting is scheduled to be on Wednesday, May 6th. Thank you. Um, Pennsylvania School Boards Association, Mr. Henderson. Good evening. Uh, the PSBA uh, regional or sectional meeting that was originally scheduled for Monday, April 6th, was canceled due to the coronavirus. Uh, pandemic. However, uh, the PSBA has been extremely active in providing uh, our, our Upper Dublin uh, team with uh, timely information on uh, coronavirus, the latest coronavirus uh, updates and information from Harrisburg, as well as uh, actively engaging our legislative leaders in Harrisburg uh, in all attempts to protect the funding for our, our kids and, and our school systems. Um, we look forward to the sectional meeting being rescheduled in May, and I will give an update then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Township, Mr. Sirota or Mr. Robski? Uh, I'll take it. Okay, we did meet, um, I think it was uh, March 31st, and we talked about um, strategies on how to what to do when school reopens in April but obviously uh, all those strategies are no good the township trail system is uh, operating however spark playgrounds basketball courts tennis courts are all closed uh, site watch monitors them and then um, chases the people away when they when they jump the fence or when they're using it um, we're um, governor wolf uh, obviously closed everything up. So the township is still uh, collecting all their, doing all their services, um, but uh, you have to make, um, you know, appointments um, in the lobby to meet with the township staff. Um, Sandy Run is, uh, we talked about Sandy Run construction, that is uh, up somewhat. Um, and then we were talking about revenues coming in. The township's uh, uh, real estate revenues are still uh, strong. However, come um, September, a lot of those revenues may be going down because they're earned income tax. And uh, that was about it. Our next meeting won't be until probably in the, in the summertime. That's Thank it. you, Mr. Rapsky. Appreciate it. Unless, unless Mark has anything to add. All right. Okay, no, good. No. Thank you. 
All right, uh, last up, we have the Upper Dublin Education Foundation, Mr. Wallach. Thank you so much. Um, the Ed Foundation typically meets the night after our legislative meeting. So uh, oddly enough, the last meeting was February the 25th. Um, reporting at that meeting, uh, there was a lot of discussion about strategic planning and priorities, great discussion. Uh, the foundation board did an internal survey that's going to go a long way in terms of goal setting and priority setting. Uh, board was also discussing a lot of its upcoming flagship events, Monte Carlo night, music in the schools to name a few. Uh, the world changed um, after that meeting, events got canceled. Um, ticket holders for canceled events were given an option to either get a refund or to have their ticket price uh, be a donation to the Ed Foundation. Um, some people uh, took the foundation up on that and the foundation's thankful for that. Um, and certain things have been able to happen virtually. Um, as Dr. Yanni said, the Upper Dublin Medal winners were selected virtually and announced. Um, and the Greenfield Film Festival, another event that the foundation is very involved in as a sponsor, occurred last week virtually online. Um, in March, the foundation did not meet, um, but tomorrow night's April meeting is scheduled to occur uh, virtually uh, as originally scheduled, and I'll report on that next month. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, everyone. I truly appreciate it. Okay, um, now to our solicitor's report, Mr. Diazio. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, the Sunshine Act announcement for this evening, I'll, I'll take that first, and that announcement is that the board met in executive session immediately prior to tonight's meeting for approximately 30 minutes to discuss uh, matters of personnel involving uh, staffing uh, levels for next year. Um, in addition to that, I just want to make the board aware, um, as many of you probably are already aware, that there's many proposals going around in Harrisburg regarding um, legislation about a bunch of different topics that, that may and will impact schools uh, for the 2019-2020 school year and then in future school years. Um, the piece of legislation and an update that I received this afternoon was that the Senate uh, State Government Committee passed out of committee um, House Bill 1776. House Bill 1776 is one of the bills that has been introduced that will um, freeze property taxes, uh, require schools to freeze their property taxes at 2019-2020 uh, uh, levels. So that would mean that the, the budget that you're preparing now uh, that would go into effect July 1, uh, the state would, would put a hold on any, on any tax increase to go into effect on July 1. It's not really known where that legislation is going to go at this point. Again, it, it passed um, mainly along party lines was my understanding out of the state government committee uh, today. The next step in the process would, it, would mean that it would move to the full house for consideration by the full house and then it would have to go over to the Senate for uh, consideration. So we're, we're still a ways away from uh, there being any definitive legislation, uh, you know, to be presented to the governor, but that that is floating around in Harrisburg. And uh, to uh, Mrs. Francis's point earlier, you know, uh, th this, it's active right now in terms of legislative affairs. And, and so continue uh, as you are able to, to, to stay in touch with your legislators, even if it's in a virtual forum. Uh, to advocate for the issues that are important for public education. Uh, that's, that's all I have this evening uh, for my report. Thank you. Thank you. I just would like to add that there were two executive sessions uh, held via Zoom uh, on April 15th and April 22nd to briefly discuss personnel matters and no deliberation occurred. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Diazio. We are now up to the next community input section of our meeting. What I'd like to do is take uh, Ms. Williams uh, first because she kindly waited, and then we will just go in order as the names come up on my screen. It's not in any order of preference. Um, so Ms. Williams, if you are interested in um, returning to the so-called podium, we'd love to take your feedback now. Yes, can yes, we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. I don't know if you can see me, but hopefully we can, can but that's okay. We can we can okay. Um so my name is Dina Williams. I live in Maple Glen Elementary and um also giving my condolences to Mr. Wisher because we adored him. Mm, thank you. Um I am a proud parent of a 2020 senior 
also a 1987 graduate of Upper Dublin, as well as a healthcare worker. So I feel very informed about what is going on in our community right now. First off, I wanna thank Mr. Schultz and Dr. Callahan for taking their time to listen to several parents' concerns and suggestions the other day, as well as the efforts they put forth for our seniors, including the pending graduation. I'm here tonight to request that the school board, along with Mr. Schultz and Dr. Callahan, reconsider the plan for a virtual graduation ceremony on June 8th. I'm not sure how much the school board is involved in the planning of the graduation, but from what we've been informed, it looks like they have decided on a virtual graduation. Effective March 13th, our children were pulled out of school for an expected two week closure due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Little did we know at that time that two weeks would grow to, into an entire school year. Each and every week our seniors along with their families have seen many traditions, events, and special memories that seniors are supposed to be a part of get canceled one by one by one. At the beginning of the school year, all senior families receive an orange piece of paper listing all of the activities that our seniors should be looking forward to. The only one left from that long list is graduation. Please consider having this ceremony in person. Social distancing is needed. Per Dr. Arkusha's statement, all Montgomery County schools would not be ready for an in-person graduation by the end of May or beginning of June. She did not mention anything about a time frame after that. We as a society should be allowed large group gatherings with social distancing by the end of June or maybe July. We cannot predict what this future will bring, but please consider giving these students hope to be with their friends and have a normal, as normal can be, graduation as possible during that time. One student stated on the survey, there was a survey that was, uh, developed by Michael Slifka and his mom will also speak tonight. Over 700 people responded to that survey. One senior on that survey said that he sits in front of his computer all day. He does not want to sit in front of his computer and watch himself graduate. Another student wrote, rather than wait, he would rather wait 20 years to graduate in person from Upper Dublin than have a, gr a virtual graduation. The school district is considering postponing prom until August 3rd. Why can we not postpone graduation? According to the survey, graduation is more important to these students than prom. April 18th, the United States Air Force Academy graduated 1,000 cadets in a socially distanced ceremony with our own Vice President Pence in attendance. June 13th, West Point Academy in New York will be holding their own socially distanced graduation ceremony with our own President Trump as the commencement speaker. And as we all know, New York is one of the epicenters for this disease. Times have changed and we will all need to learn to live in our lives in a socially distanced way. We need to start somewhere. Upper Dublin can do this. Dr. Yanni, you just posted a quote. There needs to be a lot more emphasis in what a child can do instead of what a child cannot. Our seniors, along with all students across the nation, have been asked to change the way they learn. Never asked if they can do it, only expected to do it. Upper Dublin needs to stop saying that they cannot do this and start saying how we can do this. It can be done. Please think outside of the box. We ask our children to do it every day. We expect nothing less from them. Please show them that they can expect this from you. It is so important to the class of 2020 to be together and graduate as a group. Mrs. Francis, this speaker is just over four minutes at this point. I just wanted to make you aware of that. I'm trying to keep track of time as best as I can here. That's all I have to say. I'm just trying to get out my thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming tonight to speak to us. We'll address any comments in a couple of minutes when we get to our other uh, speakers this evening. Um, next up is uh, Tammy Slivka. And Ms. Evans will be bringing you up. There you go. Ms. Slivka? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, my name is Tammy Slifka. I live just around the corner from the high school, um, Fort Washington, uh, Pennsylvania. My son, Michael, is a senior, and I am just, Dina put everything so well. Um, these kids have had all of their things taken away that they so look forward to. My son did a petition online and had um, communicated with Dr. Yanni about this. And Dr. Yanni, I appreciate your immediate response to him. Um, again, if you were to go on this petition and see the heartbreak these kids are expressing and how much has been taken away, and they want a, a graduation, and I'm sure they would bend over backwards doing any kind of social distancing if we can make it the end of July is three months from now, and it just, uh, the possibilities are there that we could do an in-person graduation. We see other schools posting all these phenomenal ideas, and I just think it's, it's just terrible that the, the only thing we can come up with is sticking to a June 8th graduation virtually where we're sitting on our couches at home to watch them. I, I think these kids deserve so much more than that. They're heartbroken as it is. Again, Dina spoke so well and emphasized all of our points so well, but if you had a chance to look online at this petition, he had 700 kids and family members all imploring school district to please reconsider and have like an end of July, right around, you're talking about rescheduling the prom, do it that same week. And, and I realized that it might turn into a virtual at that point, but we, we've got to take the chance that it might not be and give these kids something to look forward to. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I see one other hand raised, Ms. Kathy Brady. Um, Ms. Evans, she's not appearing as being permitted to talk on my screen. Um, it says on my computer that she needs an updated version of Zoom, unfortunately. Shall we, how do we address? Um, Ms. Brady, it sounds as though your Zoom is not cooperating with us. If she can reach out to us via the chat feature, I don't know if they see the chat feature or the Q&A feature. They should. Um, we have two questions in the Q&A. Ms. Brady, do you see, I, it's very hard to know. Um, oh, there you are. There you are. Um, Ms. Brady, I see you in the Q&A. If you are interested in typing a question, I'll wait for a couple of minutes and I can happily make your comments for you and we can attempt to address them. Okay, Ms. Brady is asking if she can call in. Um, we haven't tried that before. I can, um, hold on, let me see if I'm. In the meantime, Ms. Evans, if you can work on having Ms. Brady call in, we have two other community members with hands raised. I'll go next if we can. Uh, Ms. Brady, we're going to try to work this out with you with you with a call. Ms. Carmen, Audrey Carmenati, please. Uh, we can ask her to speak. All right, Ms. Carmenati, I do see that you're uh, able to speak. Can you hear us? Yes, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I hadn't actually planned on speaking tonight, so I don't have anything prepared. I did just want, I am one of the retirees this year, and um, I was hired by Bud Brown in 1993, um, began in Fort Washington Elementary. By the way, I live in Dresher um, in the Jarrettown neighborhood. After Fort Washington, I worked at Jarrettown. Um, Doug Wisher was a good friend of mine. I send condolences out to both of their families. 
And then I finished up my career the last 15 or so years at Maple Glen. My entire Upper Dublin career was in second grade. And I have met so many wonderful people and made so many wonderful friends. And Upper Dublin is, has become my family. And I just wanted to thank you for the honor of being able to interact with the community and the parents and have an opportunity to make an impact, hopefully, on all of the children that have come through my classroom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your comments mean a great deal and we wish you every success and a bit of enjoyment in your retirement. Um, we also have uh, Ms. Evans, are we able to speak with Ms. Brady? You are muted. She can call in um, right now to 215-643-8000. If that works, and I'll two one five six four three four three eight 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 zero two. All right, I made her aware of that. There she is. All right. Hello, Kathy. Can, hello, hello. Can you hear her? Yes, we can. Okay. Go ahead, please. Thank you. My apologies. Um, it was working all day, then. So I just also want to thank Dina and Tammy for bringing up the issue of graduation for our seniors. Uh, we, as you know, with Michael's petition and parents meeting, and of course, meeting with Mr. Schultz and Dr. Callahan, who have been um, extremely uh, supportive and compassionate about hearing us. and. I just want to reiterate that, and I think to Dina's point, is that this is about what Upper Dublin can do in this crisis, and not only, and even beyond this crisis. My son is a senior, and I had a daughter graduate last year, and another daughter, daughter graduate the year before. And so while we all understand the concerns with social distancing, and not spreading any diseases, I mean, the condition. There are opportunities. I know that one of the ideas, and we are all for an in-person graduation, so I just clearly want to emphasize that point. We did have a discussion where we learned there were conversations about maybe a car procession and maybe a gauntlet where the kids would you know, and the family members would drive through this, this gauntlet, um, and, you know, in homeroom. So it would be 25 cars. And again, thinking outside of the box and that can-do attitude that Upper Dublin uh, is emphasizing today is so important because we've done our own research as parents and one of the questions is, what is Upper Dublin School District doing to research additional opportunities? So just allow me to stick with this gauntlet for a moment. If we have a gauntlet where these, it's like a car procession, and whenever this occurs, and the kids drive through with their parents, there is a microphone with a radio frequency. It's actually... Um, an on-location cinema in Horsham, PA, our next-door neighbor, where Mr. Schultz can be speaking through that microphone, and all of us can hear it in the car if you, you station into an FM radio. And then all the kids can gather in their cars, socially distanced, not outside of their cars, and Mr. Schultz is able to instant ask them to push their tax books to the other side, and then the kids can throw their hats. Again, we really are asking Upper Dublin to think beyond the virtual and within the guidelines of social distancing. Businesses are going to be opening up soon, and Dina, a healthcare provider who understands the risks and ramifications. However, when you look at other Lots. We were told that only 25 cars 
were allowed to congregate at one time. And I'm trying to understand what the issue is when we look at local uh, stores that have more than 300 cars. So we are asking that you look at all these options and make decisions that are timely because things are changing often. Um, and again, we want to thank you for your consideration. We feel very strongly about this. And we all know that we're in a different time. Our kids all know it. And we need to um, create an opportunity that will be long lasting. And this is a hard historical moment and one that will be um, known, especially through Upper Dublin, for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to hang up now. Thank you for your call. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Brady. We have um, Jennifer Aravalo. Okay. Um, I'm getting the same message. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm assuming this happened actually on a call I did last week that Zoom sometimes pushes out updates in the evenings oh. around okay. seven o'clock. That's great. <laughs> I guess they think business has closed for that day. Um, Ms. Aravalo, if you can hear us, we'd love to hear from you. Um, your two choices are the Q&A, um, which is at the bottom of your screen where you can type notes to me and I can read them or to dial in to the number that we provided earlier, which I can actually restate. And I'm gonna to try to send you a message. Uh, I cannot do that, I thought I could. Um, if you could restate that number for me, Ms. Evans. It's 215-643-8802. Oh, there she is. Um, okay, Ms. Arvalo, I see your question. I will, I will um, read it out. And then if you have a follow-up, if I've missed something, um, I'll allow that as an accommodation for tonight. Um, Ms. Aravalo's question is, can we have more details on the continuity of education as it relates to live lessons? Also, a note about posting agenda items on the screen so we can see the items that are being passed, meaning I believe you're referring not to student agendas, but to the legislative agendas as they're being passed in, in during a board meeting. Great. And she said yes. So I believe I've covered those two items. We're going to get back to everyone in a second. I just want to ensure that we don't have any additional raised hands. I am scrolling through the attendees. Um, I do appreciate everyone who has participated and I very appreciative of your patience, seeing no additional hands raised um, in our participant zone. Um, I will now close community input and invite members of the board and the administration to comment. Dr. Yanni, um, I'm happy to start with you if you'd like. Sure, thank you. Um, I know Mr. Schultz and a number of our high school administrators are with us this evening. Um, if Mr. Schultz could be given the opportunity to talk, uh, Ms. Evans, um, we've, been, we've been discussing graduation at length, so if he could um, be given the opportunity to speak. Mr. Schultz is getting the same unfortunate Zoom message. I can promote him to panelists, though. Let me try that. Mr. Schultz, did I get you? Ms. Evans is nodding. I can't see him. I see Ms. Callahan. Dr. Callahan, so sorry. Sorry. I'm Mr. Schultz, huh? Oh, you are Mr. Schultz. Wait, there's others. There were three people logged in as Mr. Schultz. Patience, I so appreciate. Mr. Schultz, was that you? Was that you? That's not Mr. Schultz. Hold on one moment. <laughs> Mr. Ortiz is on. Mr. Ortiz is here. One last chance for Mr. Schultz. Did I get it? 
There he is. Oh my goodness. Wonders never cease. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Schultz, any, which one of you that would like to reply? No, I'd be, I'd be happy to reply and thank you for the opportunity. Um, let me start by uh, wishing uh, congratulations to our retirees. I know that's not the reason that I'm speaking right now, but hearing from Ms. Carminati and, and knowing so many of the others who have uh, reached this celebrated time in their careers, I just want to wish them all the best. Um, I'd like to thank Ms. Williams, Ms. Slifka, Mrs. Brady, and all of the other parents who have reached out and who have served as collaborators and confidants through all this. We appreciate their input and we are trying to make the best decision possible for all of our students and for our community. This is about as unfortunate a set of circumstances as one can imagine for a graduating class and there are no easy answers and for a lot of us there uh, don't seem to be a whole lot of good answers but we do appreciate the collaboration, we do appreciate the input and we also appreciate the acknowledgement that our hearts are breaking right along with everybody else's. Um, to get to the specific points, and Dr. Callahan and I were very happy to have an opportunity to meet with a, uh, with a group of parents last week, and we have a follow-up meeting co this coming week. We discussed a lot of the uh, ideas and points that they made, but for the sake of public input, it is, it is our understanding based on guidance from the county commissioner based on information that came out today, both from the governor and from the um, uh, Pennsylvania Health Secretary, and, and based on the um, conversations that we have had with our local uh, police chief and, and force, the opportunities to get students together in a large group assembly at this time and for the near foreseeable future are unlikely. As a result of that, we have made a very difficult decision to hold a virtual graduation on the date and at the time that the entire community has set aside, which all but guarantees that all 292 members of the graduating class would be able to participate. Um, one of the parents brought up, I think it was Mrs. Brady, that we are planning a, uh, a virtual gauntlet where students remain in cars she mentioned 25 cars gathering at the same time. We wanted all 300 gathered at the same time so that we could have a lengthy parade, but because of the risks involved and because of the lack of oversight we would have with such an event, we have to station them in groups of 25 and then we will roll them down Lockhouse Avenue. Um, as indicated in the Friday message to the community, which was also shared with the senior class, it is our hope, it is our desire, it is our priority to allow an opportunity for the entire senior class to get together and to celebrate one another at the earliest date possible. Currently, we're looking at a day in late July. If that doesn't work, we'll try again in August. If it bends into the upcoming school year, we could either do it hopefully at the time of homecoming or even as late as Thanksgiving when students are home for break. Um, but at this point, the decision that we have made has been to hold the virtual uh, excuse me, graduation on the date that uh, we announced at the beginning of the school year to celebrate our students in the best way possible with the strongest technology that we have available to us. And then as soon as we get the opportunity to bring them together with a large group assembly, we're hoping to take advantage of that. Thank you so much, Mr. Schultz. Um, Dr. Callahan or, um, oh, and I'm getting a terrible echo now, I apologize. Dr. Callahan or Mr. Ortiz, if you're still on, either one of you have any additional comments regarding the high school planning around graduation. One, one parent did send me a question and answer question while we were doing this and it's hard for me to know when it came in. Um, and I believe you just told us kind of the timeline for everything. Um, are we going to be able to, well, this will all go out in the meeting minutes of tonight's call so that parents can see kind of what our thinking is about the fall, but I do, or the late summer and, and early fall, but I do appreciate that explanation. We have also had communication with the class officers 
it's very important to Mr. Schultz that the students certainly get a chance to weigh in. We also have just put a Google survey out and we got quite a, a nice result from that as well. I think we've been meeting um, in the next couple of days with the officers again to uh, analyze and, and look at those results. And of course, the class uh, advisors as well, Mr. Schwartz and Mr. Stover. And we'll be talking, communicating with them on all these upcoming activities. Okay, thank you so much. Um, do we have any additional comments regarding graduation? I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I do think it's important to know that our hearts are all breaking, just as Mr. Schultz said. I mean, it's much smaller scale at my house, but I have a rising ninth grader who, you know, like all kids was looking forward to the celebration of a milestone. Um, it's very difficult. Days at home, some days are very difficult right now. Um, I've been talking with lots of parents about the challenges of the depression and feelings of unsettledness that our kids are going through. And I just, I mean, it's clear from the faces and the tone I think of the people on this call, um, and I especially appreciate Dr. Yanni and the high school leadership. We take this so seriously. We're trying very, very hard to work within all the regulations that are coming at us and to be creative. And I only wish there was a perfect solution. So I, I, we're gonna continue to work on your behalf and we thank you. Um, I, Francis, can I, yes, can I speak okay, to that point please. for just a second? So um, I really do wanna thank the parents that spoke um, tonight, and I've been communicating as students are emailing me questions about graduation and thoughts about graduation, like the high school, I'm also um, responding to them. Um, and at, at some point, someone needs to be angry at someone. And so I'm happy to, you know, to shoulder that shoulder that blame, although none of us can, can control the pandemic. Last week, we, we were a little bit hopeful when the governor talked about his three phase plan to reopen Pennsylvania. Um, some of those hopes were dashed um, this afternoon when the governor and um, health secretary, Rachel Levine spoke. Um, I wanna read just a few quotes from, the, from an article um, that was published just uh, a few hours ago. Um, Dr. Levine says, we know that school has been canceled for the rest of the year and we're not going to allow large gatherings even in yellow zones. So I think it's a fair assumption that graduations will have to be remote. Um, she also talks, um, she stresses throughout the article several times that large groups of people will not be able to congregate for those ceremonies. So that means um, while uh, you know, a true in-person graduation um, is not likely, obviously as Mr. Schultz said, um, we are absolutely, absolutely making it a priority that as soon as we are able to do something in person, um, we absolutely will. Um, I see that um, someone um, put in the question, does this mean that our feedback is disregarded and there will not be additional considerations um, as we move forward opening up business? Absolutely no one's feedback is disregarded. Um, I, as I've said to Mr. Schultz and, and to the high school administrative team, if we had a magic wand, we would make it so that we would be able to have graduation. We know that stands out as the singular most important event for kids and their parents, guardians, and families. So you have our commitment that if we are able to do something in a live format, we absolutely will do that. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Yanni. I need to go back for a moment and take care of a piece of business from the community input. I was attempting to toggle back and forth between the written Q&A and the uh, responses that were coming in via uh, video and, and phone. And uh, I'm going to read a comment from uh, Mrs. Jennifer Kuznets. Um, it, uh, it mentions, uh, I would like the district to have a PTO liaison, even if it is not someone from the board. They do a lot of work for the school district and parents and outreach. Many times the PTOs are the only liaisons between school administration and parents. Can we please consider this role? Um, so I wanted to add that for the thinking of the group. Uh, Ms. Kuznets, I, 
I don't know about going backwards and kind of reopening comment. I see that your hand is raised. Um, Mr. Diazio, I can't see you on my screen anymore. So I was going to leave it at the comment and her hand is down. So I guess she has heard me. Okay, very good. Thank you uh, for your understanding, Ms. Kuznets. My apologies. Um, if anyone has any thoughts on that. I, I know that um, this year, um, so many things were disrupted up to and including the annual um, sort of state of the state of the PTO's general uh, leadership gathering that Dr. Yanni had planned for the spring. Um, so I don't know that we had particularly talked about an administrative liaison to the PTOs, but that's something that um, we can talk about and, and uh, consider further. All right, anybody else with comments or questions for this I, evening? Um, Mrs. Francis, can uh, yeah. we have Mr. Hoffman speak to the question about the continuity of education plan? Yes, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Hoffman. Yes, thank you. Um, so our continuity of education plan is uh, linked onto the main webpage. And as we have updates to that, um, we're continually uh, updating that document and adding to that document. Um, we're refining our process as we go. We began the process uh, very early at focusing uh, from an essential learning standards-based uh, approach, looking specifically at the 5E framework to guide our K-12 uh, instruction and delivery of instruction. Since the beginning, our focus has been on equity, access, sus sustainability, and screen time, recognizing that all four of those areas um, are necessary for us to consider. Um, we this week, uh, actually last week, um, had been working on uh, training our teachers over the last two weeks. And last week, we did a, a small pilot with our tech rep teachers um, to begin implementing um, uh, Google Meet time as appropriate for their level or their course. Um, we had overwhelming success um, taking into fact that, uh, you know, the social emotional piece that, that several people had spoken to tonight, um, as well as just that uh, ability for teachers to give feedback to students. Um, this time is optional for students um, because we cannot control uh, home situations, access situations, um, and competing um, struggles at home. Students that may need support and have multiple students in multiple grades and parents being out of the house, high school students who have taken on jobs um, to support their family during this time. So we have some competing factors and in, in the benefit to this time then is that our teachers are able to offer office hours, uh, collaboration with each other and their peers, uh, and our elementary students are, ha are conducting morning and afternoon meetings. These sessions then are recorded, um, but we will not be using Google Meet for live instruction. Uh, it will be used for um, enrichment, intervention, uh, remediation, review, uh, and community building. Thank you very much. I think that provides some clarity. Um, I know we're gearing up for our first Zoom, uh, first Google Meets this week, our Hangouts this week. So I appreciate the administration uh, supporting that development. Um, any other comments or questions from the board or administration? All right, I truly appreciate every single uh, attendee who listened uh, and participated via Zoom all of the parents who spoke this evening. Um, it is really, we do really take it to heart. We talk a lot about um, the issues that we are all facing and um, I truly appreciate the creativity that Dr. Yanni continues time and time again to show in, in his problem solving and the rest of the team um, as he leads them. So thank you very much to all of our administrative team for your tireless efforts. And um, I guess the last upcoming thing, uh, or last uh, thing I'd like to mention is that we have our next legislative meeting on Monday, May the 18th, again, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, as, doc, uh, as Mr. Leckman noted, if you have questions in advance, please do email them, feel free. Um, we will make sure they're read if that is your preference of communication. And um, Mr. Diazio, are there any other Sunshine uh, announcements? 
No, that's all for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. All right. Francis, if, yes. Mr. Francis, if, if, if I could just say sure. uh, two things quickly. Um, prior to our next round of committee meetings and legislative meetings, we will make sure there's a statement on the website um, reminding folks to check their version of Zoom to make sure that they have uh, the latest version of Zoom. Um, so we will take care of that. And also, while I know some of the parents are absolutely um, disappointed, um, and thank you for your kind words, Mrs. Francis, um, it's really the high school administration that is working um, really, really hard to come up with some ways that we can honor kids. And you have our commitment going forward that we'll continue to do that. So I want to thank Mr. Shelton, Dr. Callahan, Mr. Ortiz, and Mr. Michener um, for their work in, in coming up with some outside the box ideas. Yes, indeed. We thank you all. We are very, very appreciative. And uh, with that, I wish you all a good evening and a good week ahead. Um, may there be sunshine. And uh, with that, I would like to formally adjourn this evening's meeting. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night.